Hello everyone. Today we're going to be making sensory bottles and bins for your toddler and preschooler. Sensory play is a great way for your child to discover new textures, sights, and sounds in a safe environment controlled by you. Always be sure to supervise your child when using their sensory bottles or bins as they may contain small parts. See if your child can help you with some of the steps in creating them. Scooping, pouring, shaking items in a baggie, you know your child best and what they like to do. Once you get started with making sensory bottles and bins, the possibilities will seem endless on what you can put into them for your child to explore. This is an example of the sensory bottles we're going to be making today. On the left is a rainbow water bead sensory bottle that's in a soft soap bottle container. In the middle is an oil and water sensory bottle and on the right hand side is an I spy sensory bottle. To make a sensory bottle, you will need a plastic bottle of your choice. Voss water bottles are cylinders with a wide mouth for easy filling and easy to remove label. Core hydration bottles are curved, also have a wide mouth for easy filling, and a plastic sleeve that is easily removed. Califia creamer bottles are easy to find, have a pleasing shape, and a plastic sleeve that comes right off. Soft soap body wash bottles are very easy to find and have an interesting shape. If you turn them on their side, they resemble a fish. They also have easy to remove labels. Here's an example of the bottles that we're using. They should, any one of these should be easy to find at your grocery store. Add-ins for your sensory bottles. Well, in, if you're making an oil and water sensory bottle, you're going to want to use oil. Um, baby, mineral, vegetable, all work very well. You're going to want to use clear oils as if you're coloring them, they will show up the best with the color. Of course, water, water-based food coloring, and oil-based food coloring. Additional add-ins are glitter, water beads, rice, small toys, sand, which can also be colored like the rice I'm going to show you in a later step, but no metal as metal could rust if your sensory bottle contains liquids. So here we have an oil and water sensory bottle. First, fill your bottle halfway with the oil of your choice and add a few drops of the oil-based coloring. In a separate container, add water and regular food coloring. Once that is mixed up, pour it into the bottle containing the oil. Add a scoop of glitter if you prefer. Definitely don't want to use metallic though, as it could rust. Add as many scoops of glitter as you like. Now you can shake up your bottle and watch how the colors separate once you release it. Um, they, it, I used blue and yellow here with the hopes that it would become green. Um, it is very bubbly at first, but the bubbles will subside by the next day. You will want to use a super or hot glue to glue the lid on so that it won't open, but just always make sure that you watch your child when they're looking at their sensory items. This type of bottle is also a good item to use as a mindfulness activity. Your child can watch the content settle and the blue separate back from the yellow. And it does take some time, so it's a, it's a good thing to focus on for mindfulness. So the I Spy sensory bottle, I used rice. Um, I took a half cup of rice and put it into a baggie, added a few drops of regular food coloring. I sealed the baggie and shook it up. Um, that will distribute the color throughout the rice. It's not perfect, but it does color the rice quite nicely as you can see in the second picture there. 
I used purple and pink. I also had some foam alphabet shapes, some small erasers in cute shapes. There are some glow-in-the-dark stars and little colored discs that um, are used as like bingo markers, but I thought they would be a cute addition to the bottle. And then the last picture is the bottle all put together. It just contains rice and the objects you see, and now you can play I Spy. I spy with my little eye a U. Can you find the cake? The water bead sensory bottle is a fun sensory bottle to make. You start off with water beads and they're very, very small. I separated mine by color and added water. Over the course of a few hours or maybe even overnight, the water beads absorb the water and swell quite a bit in size. And as you can see in the middle picture, they have grown quite a bit from the original picture. Um, when I used the water beads in this bottle, I packed them in pretty tightly. I sprinkled glitter between the layers and also put the baby oil in there. So you still do get that nice movement, but it's also a really pretty bottle to hold up to the light. I wanted to pack them in tightly so the rainbow would stay. Um, if they're not tightly packed, they will separate and um, it won't be a rainbow anymore. But that's up to you, however you want to do it. You can actually use just one or two colors and your child would probably be quite captivated by that. So moving on to sensory bins, you can see the three examples that we're going to show you today. There's the pom-pom bin on the left, in the middle is the water bead sensory bin, and on the right is the colored rice. To make your sensory bin, you will need a plastic bin. It can be as large or small as you'd like. A small sensory bin with the potential for messiness can be placed into another larger empty bin or put down a plastic tablecloth or even use in the bathtub. With the weather being nice as it is, you could go outside and play with your sensory bin on the porch. Pick a theme and go with it. Warm, soapy water in a bin can be a washing station sensory bin. Add some small toys, sponges, squirt toys, etc. Use your imagination. The idea is to get your child to experience touching things that they're not familiar with. So I've chosen the pom-poms as the, kind of the beginner level sensory bin. Um, the bin I chose here is just called a letter tray, actually. It's about the size of a ream of copy paper. I took a bag of pom-poms of lots of different colors and sizes, some little rainbow bowls, and some scoops. Pictured here is a pair of child-sized tweezers uh, you can encourage that fine motor skills with um, having your child pick out s specific colors to put into the bowls. Or you can use a clothespin if you don't have tweezers. And the pom-poms are nice and soft. They can just be touched as they are, or you can create a little game with it. Or also hide some things in the pom-poms for your child to find. So the rice sensory bin, I started off putting half a cup scoop of rice into the baggie with some food coloring and I shook it up just like I did for the sensory bottle. And you can see here I used five different colors of rice. Um, you can hide little toys in the piles of rice. I would probably use more for your child. Also, just be mindful that the rice bin could be considered one of the messy bins, so you may want to contain it in another bin as well. Let your child mix the colors together, dig through, find little objects that you've hidden. Here I kind of created a sort of a bento sensory bin with the rice and little bento accessories, including the little grass. Also some little tiny containers that you can put the rice in to see if your child can open them to encourage those motor skills as well. 
Finally, here's our water bead sensory bin. Again, you saw what we did with the water beads. Put the little tiny ones in there with some ones that have already started to take on some water so you can see the size difference. And you can let them sit a few hours, make it into an activity, check in to see how large the water beads have grown over say every 30 minutes, every hour, or just let them sit overnight and they will go um, swell to their maximum size. Your child's water sensory bin can be anything that they'd like it to be. It can be an ocean for their little boats or quicksand for their dinosaur toys. It's, it's something to make their own. Just make sure to closely supervise your child at this point as these are very small objects and not edible. If you're looking for an edible option, tapioca pearls can be used. I'm not sure if they would be bright, vibrant colors, but they are edible, but these are not edible water beads. So I hope you all come up with some ideas on your own or use the ones that you've seen today. If you've got new ideas, please add them to the comment section. We would love to see. I hope you enjoy creating sensory items with your child and thank you for watching our presentation.